So um, the next uh, period we have between here and lunch are what we're calling lightning talks. And as I mentioned, this is going to be our younger generation coming up and showing us some creative ways to engage with science and science communication. The first of those are going to be Jamie Curry, our science communicator from the Integration Application Network. And um, we did a project with the United States Geologic Survey on drought uh, around the country. We went to Alaska, Hawaii, continental U.S., Puerto Rico. Down in Puerto Rico, we heard some great stories and uh, from the people there that experienced both drought and, of course, Hurricane Maria. And Jamie captured those uh, and is going to give us a taste of that. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Both in the U.S. Virgin Islands and in Puerto Rico, there's a really strong interest and awareness of really strong connectivity between rainfall and, and weather patterns and all kinds of aspects of people's lives here. I mean, when you have a two-month drought and you're, you're forced to go on water rationing for that period of time, when you have more and more extremely warm days in the urban areas, that starts making you think, well, what, what's this phenomena going on here? Drought, in my opinion, is not only the absence of water, but the loss of the ability to grow our own foods. The majority of crop farmers depend on the rain. They time the planting with the rainfall. So any deficit in rainfall is a direct hit, not only on crop farming, but also on livestock. It was scary. It was hard and it is still something that we're getting over. What we found is that going around the country to all of our different regions is that drought is uh, important, becoming more important, and is becoming manifest in a bunch of surprising ways that we still need to understand. We think that we're seeing changes in species composition to some of the more drought tolerant tree species in particular. We know that some of the wildlife populations, at least we think, are declining as a result of the drought. You can have uh, good quality in the water, but then you don't have the, the availability of the water. So you have a drought, as is happening here in Puerto Rico. So what the United Nations suggests is that you should deal with the water in an holistic approach, not only taking into consideration the quality, but the equity of the water kind of data layers that go into the drought declaration. At a minimum, we need enough precipitation data to be able to calculate something called the standardized precipitation index. And there's different kind of lengths of time that go into a valid SPI calculation. And at a minimum, they like to see about 50 years, which is what we have but for a very limited number of stations. And we have huge data gaps. You can imagine, for example, when a hurricane comes and blows your weather station away, that there's data gaps. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Tell me where the, where the next road is going to be. We don't have that. So all we can do is really depend on the climatological data, look at past trends. When I look to the future and when I think about extreme events for the U.S. Virgin Islands, I am most concerned about hurricanes. When I heard about uh, Hurricane Maria, I was very concerned. Um, you know, I, I kept um, listening and we've received many information and data regarding um, how vulnerable Puerto Rico would be if we were hit by, by a hurricane. And um, I was getting ready, getting ready with my family. I have two boys and my husband and my little dog and about I'm hearing about how this, how heavy and, and intense this hurricane was going to be. I think Maria was scarier. I don't know why. I think Maria was scarier because it was at night. Where, where we were, we could hear the wind roar. And it was like a train type of wind. And then there was just so much water, it just kept on raining, and so we had water coming into the house. When we came up to the Center for Marine and Environmental Studies that day, we could see the roof laying on the ground out in front of the building. Um, and you could just see skeletons of the walls, so just like exposed cables, walls that had collapsed, 
just piles of debris and papers. Probably the biggest complaint I'm hearing from people, which we understand, is the loss of their homes and no roof. Because some people have put all of their life savings in their home. That's that's where that's like the, that was their bank account, the house. Thinking about the near future, hurricane season starts tomorrow, June 1st, and when you look at many of the hillsides, you see a sea of blue roofs right now. So these are the FEMA tarped roofs. And when you look across that, and when you think about, will these communities, will our communities be more prepared? I don't know. Individuals, when they, they go through an extreme climate event, whether it's drought or hurricanes, they start to think, well, I don't want to repeat that experience. <laughs> what can I do to avoid the, the adverse effects of that? There are tons of workshops related to climate um, events um, in, in Puerto Rico, and I'm you know, really grateful for everyone that is thinking how to best help Puerto Rico and thinking maybe this is the, the right moment to go and actually have these brainstorming sessions and, and try to bring solutions or help others with our own experience. So this workshop was an outgrowth of um, discussions with a researcher at the Desert Research Institute, um, Kelly Redmond, who's now passed, but he really tried to cast uh, some attention on what are some of the ecosystem impacts uh, that we'll be facing under climate change in the future related to drought. He felt it was an area of research that hadn't received much attention. But it wasn't until now that um, the government uh, and the private sector is really are, are thinking, you know, in a sustainable way. Um, so we, we sort of adapt to, you know, future climate events um, so we can continue to live in, in this island. Um, and I think we should have done this many decades ago.